The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. As we are noticing the importance of this unique dispensation of the church age, it is very much important for us to note as well the individual witnesses and corporate witnesses that we have to be in the sight of Jehovah. The individual witnesses to tell that we shall do valiantly with the knowledge of Bible doctrine and the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit when it has been controlling us through when we use rebound. Not grieving nor squelching nor lying but living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit and yielding unto the fruit of the Spirit. We need to tell to this entire world what is the power. The entire world of this earth and the entire world of the angelic creation as well. In fact, when Lord included to express the image through lion, domestic life, the ox, the bird's life, the eagle, even to the nature it would be for us in the mannerism of the life that we are going through. An absolute assurance to the principle of the word wherewith you and I have been given this great work in this unique dispensation. Not only answering to them individually that when we reach to maximum glorification of Christ, but in fact indeed corporatively we have to go through this corporate witness the church and the individual the corporate witness the wife and husband as well dear brethren in the church age there is a special case of a witness for the prosecution achieving tactical victory as a corporate witness even more significant in the testimony of an individual believer this corporate witness is none other but Christian marriage. Christian marriage was the first organization, the first corporation in history. And this word is taken from the Latin known as corpus, meaning body, a corporation, which is an association of individuals created by law, existing by an entity, and therefore any group of persons united in one body. But this is the union of one born-again man and one born-again woman who demonstrate a positive response to God's martial authority structure while simultaneously executing the unique spiritual life of the church age. Christian marriage is now the corporate opportunity to succeed where Adam and the woman failed in the Garden of Eden. With the inception of the church, God elevated Christian marriage above the divine institution of marriage and made it part of resolving the angelic conflict. The divine institution of marriage began with Adam and the woman and will forever define matrimony as the union of the man, one man and one woman. As a biblical institution, Marriage is sanctioned for both believers and unbelievers, regardless of the dispensations. Christian marriage composed of a man and a woman who are both believers in Jesus Christ is only available in the church age and above all it has been called as Christian marriage. The divine institution began with a perfect couple in perfect environment. But even perfection could not protect them from the advances of Satan. For marriage to bring forth a tandem victory of husband and wife in spiritual warfare, there had to be far greater provisions, mandates, and empowerment. The revolution of the church age doctrine and the operational spiritual life added these new dimensions to marriage. Even under the worst conditions, Christian marriage can succeed. 
and produce unprecedented contentment, stability, and testimony to both the unbelieving world and, absor and the absorbing angels. Only in the church age do the believers have the opportunity to jointly participate in such distinct and magnificent evidence against God's antagonists. A believer married to an unbeliever cannot be part of this corporate witness. Believers are warned against being unequally yoked with unbelievers as per 2 Corinthians 6.14. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to be very much careful about this Christian marriage and the corporate witness in return. Corporate witness and the importance of the marriage wherewith the people do not realize the greater importance of this marriage. Far less thinking that marriage is just fulfilling their libido. But rather we are here to tell to be a Christian marriage is a great witness in this angelic conflict. And this corporate witness is what you and I have to be demonstrated. This corporate witness is what you and I, one man again, one, one born again man and one born again woman, demonstrate a positive response to God's martial authority. That martial authority structure while simultaneously executing with the unique spiritual life of the church age. Therefore, Christian marriage is now the corporate opportunity to succeed where Adam and the woman failed in the Garden of Eden. Dear brethren, listen to this tape again so that I will be continuing in the further of the explanation of the same corporate witnesses. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given. Help the people who are listening to this tape to understand what is the importance of the Christian marriage in this unique dispensation. At the same time, help them to understand to know if they have been getting married to an unbeliever, they are out of this corporate witness. It is better for them to marry a believer, irrespective of the caste and creed, and stay loyal to this unique spiritual life because you have created one man and one woman at the beginning. No casteism, no creed. Help them to come back and look and to give a greater corporate witness and to know and to realize the true purpose of not only being an individual witness, but rather corporatively as well to be a great successes in their life. As we continue this, help us to enlighten more and more, for we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Father. Amen.